The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Man allegedly commits suicide after shooting two others. The family of Daniel Porter, 28, a promoter of Chantilly Gardens in Westmoreland, is calling for a full investigation after he allegedly shot and injured his girlfriend and best friend before killing himself. The injured have since been treated at hospital. Reports by the Savannah Lamar Police are that shortly after 3 a.m. Thursday, Porter had an argument with his girlfriend at the home of his neighbor and best friend. During the argument, Porter brandished a firearm and shot his girlfriend. His friend rushed to investigate but was also shot. Porter then ran into the bathroom and shot himself. But Porter's relatives believe he was murdered. His mother, Andrea Gray, told the Weekend Star that her son does not own a firearm and that she is demanding a full investigation. Daniel went over to the yard about 9.30 p.m. and told me that he and his friends were going to bleach all night. But after watching a movie on my phone, I fell asleep and woke back up about 3 a.m. with a headache, she said. I went to the kitchen to get a piece of garlic when I heard explosions and I thought they were knocking pieces of board together. It was after I heard commotions outside that I got concerned and called Daniel's phone, but he did not answer. Gray said she called the girlfriend of her son's friend who informed her that Porter had shot the two persons and then killed himself. Gray said she ran next door but both gunshot victims had been rushed to hospital while her son was still in the bathroom. Porter's father Donald said he is concerned that his son is right-handed but allegedly shot himself from the left side of his head. When the Weekend Star visited the crime scene, several men alleged that Porter's girlfriend had recently told him that she wanted to break off the relationship and that he did not take the news well. Commanding Officer for the Westmoreland Police Division, Superintendent Robert Gordon, told the Weekend Star that persons need to resolve their differences without violence and need to find mediators to assist them. When a relationship is not working out, walk away. We don't need to use violence to solve our problems. We also need to display greater level of tolerance, not only with our partners, but also with our neighbors and other persons who we might come in contact with, Gordon said. Michael Allen, the five-year-old boy who was attacked and mauled by a pack of dogs in Alexandria, St. Anne, on Sunday, has left the island to receive further medical treatment in the United States. It is understood that a group of Jamaicans organized for the boy and his mother to travel to New York on Friday for an emergency medical procedure at a hospital there. Michael regained consciousness on Monday after he was bitten all over his body, including his head, by at least six dogs as he returned home from a shop in the community that is located in the Alexandra area of the parish. The child was transferred from the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, where he was initially treated, to the Bustamante Hospital for Children in St. Andrew, where he was expected to undergo plastic surgery to his head. It is not clear whether that procedure was done at the facility. Meanwhile, three of the dogs that reportedly mauled the boy were taken into custody of the Jamaica Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, JSPCA, with the assistance of the owner of the animals and the local police. In relation to a probe into the incident, head of the St. Anne Police, Superintendent Carlos Russell, confirmed on Monday that several statements had been collected, including from one person among the owners of the offending dogs, who has so far been identified. It was reported that sometime after 1 p.m. on Sunday, the child was on its way home from a shop where he had been sent by his grandmother 
when the dogs attacked him, resulting in bite wounds all over his body. In a graphic video obtained by Loop News, the blood-soaked child was seen being placed on a stretcher. One of his ears appeared to be missing. Your son is getting an opportunity to go overseas to do this operation. How do you feel as a mother? I feel very excited and thankful. And I'm for the help and I hope it works. You hope it works. Is he able to speak right now? Or he's in a coma or anything? So he, he understands what's happening around him? All right, fine. So he knows that he's going overseas on an aircraft. What is he in Yes, he is. What do we say to you? Something normal like... Yes, he do. Tell me something that you can do that's wrong. That's a thing. 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 Oh, because this morning when I, when, I, when I saw him this morning, he asked me, I saw his sister and what is she doing, doing, all those of Anita and I, he's going to go back home to play with her, um, he just let me feel. Do you know if he's in a lot of pain? No, no, I don't think so, but I'm um, saying that to say this, when we were each other, his head was hurt, I don't know, because of the drive. Do you have any idea when the operation will take place? How was it? that they found out about his case. Was it through the Gleaner? The Gleaner story? Okay. And they reached out to you, McLone. All right, fantastic. You're going on what airline? All right, you didn't say? All right. Two boys tortured, raped, and buried alive in Swedish cemetery. Two boys who were tortured, raped, and buried alive in a Swedish cemetery have said they looked like they had showered in blood after escaping their horrific ordeal. They told police they were abducted, kicked, punched, burned, stabbed, and ordered to strip naked. They were also forced to dig their own grave on the night of August 22nd in Solna, north of Stockholm. The boys say their tormentors, two men aged 18 and 21, initially approached them on a footpath near the cemetery and tried to sell them drugs. After refusing their offer, they were allegedly threatened with a knife and dragged away into a forest nearby when they tried to walk away from the two accused. While there, the boys claimed that they were beaten and led into a cemetery where they were stripped naked. They said during the brutal attack, the men said they knew where they lived and threatened to harm their families. They told police their bank cards were taken after they were searched by the pair who demanded to know the details so they could use them later. To stop them from raising an alarm, their mobile phones were also taken and thrown into the woods. The evil duo is said to have given the boys a shovel for them to dig their own graves while keeping them at knife point so they could not attempt to escape. As they dug the shallow graves, the boys revealed they were continuously beaten by the men. One of the boys told cops it was difficult to get a grip on how many punches and kicks they received from their attackers. They said they were prevented from screaming when they were gagged with their own socks. Their belts were used to bind their hands together while their legs were tied up using pieces of their clothes. The ordeal continued for several hours as they were tortured and burnt with cigarette lighters. According to one of the boys, he was raped during the appalling attack. At around 3.30 a.m., they were made to lie down in the graves they had dug and buried alive. One of the boys said, I just tried to be as cooperative as possible and protect my head. I lay there trembling because it was so cold almost the majority of the night. The next morning, after fearing they would eventually be killed, the boys decided they had to try to escape. They seized their opportunity to get away when the two men strolled away into the distance. 
It was either running and dying or not running and dying, said one of the victims. They ran into a passerby who called the police at 8.40 a.m. When the cops arrived, they found the boys naked and covered with injuries. They arrested the two men who have since been charged with kidnapping, aggravated assault, rape and aggravated robbery. Local media reports that one of the suspects was wearing items belonging to the victims when the police made the arrest. Police released pixelated images of the unnamed suspects on Thursday along with information they gathered during their investigations. The pictures were published by Swedish newspaper Afton Bladet. The men have denied the charges leveled against them. Three-year-old strangled and set on fire by a couple who stole her earrings. A three-year-old girl was strangled and set on fire by a monster couple who stole her gold earrings, according to reports. Mohammed K.L. and his wife allegedly lured toddler Yana Sala to the roof of their house and killed her before stealing her gold earrings. The husband is believed to have taken the girl's body back to his home where it was kept for three days before setting it ablaze in a bid to conceal her identity. Her remains were dumped at a construction site in Egypt and was later found by other children playing nearby. Al Arabia reports that Mohammed confessed that he killed the toddler because he was poor and needed to sell the girl's earrings to pay for his pregnant wife's medical bills and take care of his children. The couple was jailed for four days while detectives investigate the shocking crime. According to Yana's heartbroken family, she went missing several days ago while playing with other children in her neighborhood. Yana's funeral was attended by thousands of sympathizers from her village in Alrada and its surrounding areas. 13-year-old girl forced to marry 48-year-old man in the Philippines. Asnaria Pamansang Mugaling became Abdulazak Ampatuan's fifth wife after a day-long ceremony in the town of Mama Pasano last month and will now look after his kids who are her age. The child bride wore a white traditional gown as she sat beside the groom during the bazaar ceremony on October 22nd. Asnaria claims she is not afraid of Abdulazak because he is nice to her. I am learning how to cook because I'm not good at it now. I want to make my husband happy, she said. Three weeks after getting married, Abdulazak built a small house for the pair to live together. He works as a farmer while Aznaria carries out household chores and helps take care of Abdulazak's children from his other marriages who are the same age as her. I am happy to have found her and spend my days with her taking care of my children, Abdulazak said. The pair said they plan to have children when Aznaria turns 20. I will pay for her school because I want her to get an education while waiting for the right time to have children, Abdulazak said.